I'm gonna make this video in one take this time because it's pretty laid out. I'm gonna sleep earlier from now on. I just want this day to be over. It's not a good day, it's just not a day I'm used to. I'm not used to days like this anymore where I'm doing nothing for the most part. Regardless, I'm going to speak about the WWE because for almost four months, there hasn't been a heel with the title. And now there's two. There's The Miz, who I've spoken about before, and whether as a face or a heel, he has the potential of going from someone that's annoying and gets X-Pac heat or only dumb marks to cheer him, to somebody that gets a legit reaction. Something that's more than just being starstruck uh, or shit like that. CM Punk, however, I didn't diagnose him as a heel yet. I gotta diagnose a couple of other people too. I have to. Anyway, CM Punk as a heel is it the same heel CM Punk was? Going from his new Nexus days, straight edge society days, and onward. He's not the same heel. And he's not the anti hero everybody's clamoring for. However, he's still giving the IWC what it's been saying. It's just a natural response. Considering they want to take into account everybody that tweets CM Punk, it makes a smart basis for a storyline when you can see a character change that dynamically. When you're analyzing a wrestler from the WWE, you gotta think about it in terms of not just face and heel, but time as well. CM Punk isn't the same heel this time, or the same character he was all those years back. All those years back, he seemed more passionate, where now he's, he's really bitter, and even more than anything else, he's cynical. Where before he actually had... Some idea that he was going to change the WWE or he was going to do something big. Now he has the title. He's the guy. And he just doesn't really give a fuck. He just wants to let everyone know he's the guy. And watching this episode of Raw, episode 1001, that's basically it in a nutshell. He is the guy. And he doesn't give a fuck. He really doesn't. You could say that's a little bitter. But it's not bitter in the sense that he's envious of Cena or Big Show or all these other people overshadowing him. It's more like he's bitter because he understands that really, at the end of the day, he loses. He really does because everyone's supposed to have their eyes on him and... They just don't give a fuck. So why should he give a fuck? And that's an interesting character. Because for the past couple of months, after Lesnar got his ass beat by John Cena, that's all I could think about as well. Why should I give a fuck? Hell, that's what I was thinking during the whole entire road to WrestleMania. Why should I give a fuck? I don't give a fuck at all. I only, like, right at a few weeks at the end of 2011, post Tables, Ladders, and Chairs, I was hype. As soon as the new year hits, I don't really give a fuck at all. And I shouldn't give a fuck. If nobody else will, why should I die? So it's an interesting take. 
Because last year, CM Punk was the kind of guy that made you think, finally, somebody that understands. Where now, you kind of understand what he's feeling, but it isn't a really good sensation of relating to somebody else. It's kind of like, alright, we're both feeling indifference. Feeling indifference together doesn't have the same effect as feeling anger together. Anger and apathy just don't mix well. <sighs> and we got Cody Rhodes. Cody Rhodes is someone else who's who I'm really thinking about because I really think that Cody Rhodes should be SmackDown Super Heel. And I have a reason for this. For one thing, we understand that Cody Rhodes has been in a lot of tag teams in the past. and That used to be what he was about. He was the team player. However, nowadays his character is a little different. Nowadays, his role as a character is basically that he's... It's a good word to describe. I wouldn't say unstable, but he can't coexist with other people. So you really can't put him on huge heel staples anymore. You can't put him on big clicks. You can't put him as a unified heel unit. So when Survivor Series kicks in, he better be in singles competition. He can't be on a 5-on-5 five -five team. He's not a Wade Barrett. He's not a choleric. He's a sociopath. He really just can't coexist with other people. He likes seeing shit break down. That's why he needs to be considered a threat. Putting him on a mid-card division or having him job out to main eventers just doesn't fucking work. He should be going insane, destroying people. And that should basically be his character. Not just because he's sociopathic, but specifically because he can't coexist with other people. If you put him off other heels, it's not going to be just like Dolph Ziggler. Dolph Ziggler is a different character. He's a different kind of heel. Dolph Ziggler is a, a cocky guy. Yet, he can coexist with other people. That's Dolph Ziggler's basic character. He's arrogant to the fucking core. And there's not much else to say about it. Show off. I'm Dolph Ziggler. Any little cliche that Dolph Ziggler does, hashtag heel, is arrogance. And a lot of characters take that Dolph Ziggler thing. Miz is annoying arrogant. Alberto Del Rio is aristocratic, high-class arrogance. But Dolph Ziggler is just plain arrogant. That's not Cody Rhodes. Cody Rhodes doesn't have an inflated ego. Even if he does, it doesn't really matter. Cody Rhodes' character is just being very sociopathic, very anti-social or counter social where he's basically just kicking everybody's ass and that's why he should be a big heel because there's no other way of delivering him he should be out there destroying people not like Brock Lesnar but where he's just getting the constant squash matches but just being really aggressive doing what ADR is doing to Sheamus but worse fucking people up even worse and He's been doing that for a while. He did that with Daniel Bryan, where he basically kicked the living shit out of him. He did that with Booker T, Dustin Rhodes, his own brother. And that's what they should really keep pushing in. They can't forget that part of his character. He's not just... He's not cocky. He's not Dolph Ziggler. He's a sociopath. Another thing, well, should we be worried about as a heel? 
Another thing is Tensai. Now, they're packaging Tensai as a monster. But he's not a normal monster with no identity. That's what you should be realizing now. Tensai isn't a Frankenstein freak. He's not Brock Lesnar. He's not Ryback. He's not Goldberg. Although... Tensai is basically just an angry ass motherfucker. He went to Japan. The WWE implies that he's his older characters. He they imply that he's A Train, Gilbert, and all these other people. And in those characters, he was very similar, except he didn't have this obvious Asian esque gimmick. So they imply this truth, they just never make it explicit. A train is basically he's not he's not a great speaker, he's not well spoken, he's kind of like a monster, but he's a little bit more than just a monster. And with his feud of Tyson Kid, that that could be something interesting, because yeah, maybe it's not going to propel Tyson Kidd even into the mid-card level, but it could create something interesting now. I mean, these are some interesting matches. A-Train's a monster with personality. He's an egomaniac who just wants to win all the time. His goal isn't just to wreck people, it's also to win. He has a competitive ego. And the way he treats his master like shit instead of being very an ally to his monster, kind of like Paul Heyman and Brock Lesnar, he treats his master like shit. His so his manager is more like a servant. Instead of a master, I should say. And I think that's fucking cool. As a big monster-esque character, that is pretty badass that he has an identity. He, he is bitter when he loses. He does treat people like shit. He's not just wreck whatever this guy tells me to. Because he pushed that guy several times. He's hit him just just on TV a few hours ago, so there you go. Hmm. Alright, I'm gonna continue on the next part. So I'm gonna pause this video right now.